Welcome to another Tuesday morning Mortgage Coach interview. Every Tuesday, 9 o'clock Pacific, we are here to bring value. You know, whether that's uh, top producers who I'm interviewing on what are they doing in the market today, or whether that's authors, leaders, trainers, speakers, uh, helping you be more successful in today's mortgage market. Uh, everybody on this call, this, this is going to be a mastermind format. I am incredibly proud. Hey, if everybody could control our mute. Marcy, if you could control people's mute. All right, thanks. Uh, everybody, if you could control mute on your side. But again, this is a mastermind format. We have some of the most successful loan officers in America that are part of our community. So there will be time for questions on today's call. Submit those through go to webinar control panel. Any questions that you have? Now, before I get into the content of the day and the special guests of today, I did want to remind everybody that every single day of the week there is live training at Mortgage Coach. So, you know, five days a week there is live training. Every Monday is for beginners. Every Wednesday tomorrow we were helping you learn how to use your mobile device to be more effective. Every Thursday we're doing Q&A. Every Friday we're doing productivity, so Friday productivity mastermind around how to get more done in less time. From a mortgage coach news front, I do want to shine a light on the fact that Rob Chrisman uh, mentioned our new loan officer playlist. So we have a number of playlists in the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel, and we have a number of great videos. So whether that's our Tuesday interview, they're here. Real World Scripts, where I'm interviewing top producers. The Best of Mortgage Coach. Um, and then we have our unedited interviews. So I'm interviewing top performers. I interviewed Wally Elderberry. It's Sales Mastery. I interviewed Garth Graham and Stratmore. It's Sales Mastery. Uh, just want to make sure everybody is aware of some of the videos that we have. And then, and then finally, every Friday, that mastermind call is uploaded, and it's available for recording for anybody that missed that call. Also, like I said, we have playlists. So the new loan officer playlist is something I want to shine a light on uh, for today's call. Make sure everybody knows about that. If you know of a new loan officer, make sure you forward that to them. All right. So I also want to remind everybody that this is the final week for the second round of the referral magnet video contest. So if you don't know what that is, I would recommend that one, you watch a few of these videos. We do have a playlist on that. Also, I posted on, um, I posted an article on LinkedIn today that has more details and more information on that. Uh, if you were only going to watch one of the videos, I'd watch one of the entries, and then I'd watch this debrief with Roberto Monaco. He's been my speaker coach for 15 years, and he unpacks what he likes about the entries and what could be better. So 14 minutes of fantastic leadership in terms of making videos great. Also, if you have two minutes to pay attention to Mortgage Coach Community, uh, I interviewed Wally Elderberry, $100 million a year producer, in Sales Mastery, I said, Wally, what is your number one takeaway? Check it out. Listen to Wally's number one takeaway. So that kind of summarizes training, news. Let's get into the topic at hand. This is all about homebuyer workshops. What kind of results should you expect from a homebuyer workshop? Why you should do these and how to do these. So I want to introduce our guest. I've got Dan Keller. Dan, you want to go ahead and turn on your... Uh, Video stream and jump up here. What's up? Good morning. What? What's up, Dan Keller? Uh, I've interviewed Dan Keller more times than I know. Um, top producer in Seattle market. Uh, he, he, again, you're gonna know why we brought Dan on in just a minute. Also, someone new, John Tom Thomas. John Thomas. I don't know that you can turn on your screen. Uh, if you can, turn it on. What's up, John? Hey guys. It's good to have you, my man. So, so Dan is going to go for 10 minutes unpacking his event strategy. I, when I first thought about doing this, this mastermind, I posted on Facebook, I think my private page, hey, who's the best at doing these um, home buyer workshops? And John, I think the most, you know, Dan got a lot of nods. I think you might have got the most nods. So congrats. You're well known in the, in the industry for your home buyer workshops. We look forward to learning from you, my brother. Thanks. All right. Uh, also, I had a number of nods from the Animac crew 
Christine Beckwith. Uh, Christine, if you could turn on your screen, say hi to everybody. Hey, Christine. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. So, so Christine has been a loan officer, but today in her role, she supports Annie Mac and their, you know, their realtor events. So she's going to tell a little bit about herself in a bit. We'll do Dan, we'll do John, we'll do Christine, and then we'll just do a mastermind. So again, if you have questions, post those in the questions. So Christine, thanks for jumping on there, and thanks for making time for the community. All right, Dan, it is all about you, my friend. Um, go ahead and stay on screen. And, and why don't you first make sure everybody knows what market you're in, a little bit about your production, and then let's talk about your events. Right on. So, hey, I'm up here. First off, Dave, thanks again. It's, it's, it's always good to be back. And today is probably, of all the calls that you've uh, invited me to talk on, today is probably my um, the one I'm most passionate about. You know, a lot of the times you're bringing me on to talk about video and tech and social media. And all of that is going to tie into what we're talking about today. But I'm up here in the Seattle market, a really high-tech market, um, and a big part of my business. So let me... You always talk, I, I see you sharing a lot of information online about your why. Um, prior to me getting in the mortgage industry in 08 and 09, um, I was a professor. I taught. And so I have a passion for teaching. I was a college baseball coach and professor. And so when I got in the mortgage industry, it was important to me that, or when I changed careers, it was important for me to change a career where I could continue uh, leading and continue educating. And I have kind of I'll tell you what, in 2010, I started with lunch and learns. I started with home buyer classes. They were terrible, but people showed up. And just over the years, we've perfected them. Um, I've got an incredible real estate agent partner uh, that you can see in this, in this image below up here in the Seattle Marketplace. I met Christian, oh, I think we met in 2012, 2013, and both of us were blogging. And both of us were... Um, were, uh, had, a, had a passion for teaching and sharing information, and so we kind of put our heads together, and we created beersandhomebuying.com. And basically what we did is uh, we had done a few transactions for Amazon downtown uh, Seattle, and um, so we just decided to hold like a home buyer happy hour. And it just kind of blew up from there over the last three years. We've expanded that to two home buyer classes a month. And as you can see in this picture, we do not struggle with getting attendance. Um, a lot of it is uh, nowadays it's word of mouth and we have a just a super structured marketing strategy to fill those classes. So that's kind of my why and that's where I'm at and where we are. Um, in auditing my closed volume from last year, get this, 30%, a little over 30% of my closed uh, unit volume came from homebuyer classes. So it's a big, it's a big percentage um, of, my, um, of, my, of my income in closed transactions. Um, I think what I wanted to do today with you, Dave, is kind of unpack uh, some of the, I mean, if you are just getting going in, as a loan officer um, and doing home buyer classes, kind of unpack uh, some important information that I wish I would have known early on. But I think you need to start with this mindset. One, you're a teacher. You're not a sales professional. When you're doing these classes, you need to take the approach of an educator as a teacher. Two, this is an incredible opportunity for you as a loan rep to go out and bring value to the real estate agent community. So whether you are, you, you know, you develop this, this format on your own and you go out and build out the marketing plan and host these classes and bring in guest agents. I'm seeing the use of tech right now where loan officers are interviewing agents, whether it be on radio shows or podcasts. That's a way to make an agent's ego feel good, but nothing makes an, an agent, uh, nothing builds a connection with a real estate agent than sending them business, and this is a great way to do that. So um, that's kind of, I, I want to kind of start with that. If you're doing it for any other reasons other than those two, um, you might be doing it for the wrong reasons. Hey, 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 Dan, so, so before we get into you going through it, and you got about seven minutes left, if you could, um, you mentioned it's 30% of your production. What is your production, just so we all have a feel for how many loans and how much production you're getting out of these educational events? Yeah. So year to date, we're uh, 68 million, and that's uh, we're October. What are we? October 10th. So we're at about 68 million in production year to date. And um, last year we were year, closed volume for 2016. We were a little over 50 million. So and, and about it. 155 so, units. 
so production is up and you're getting at least 20 million of that production directly and indirectly out of the events that you're doing. Is that Correct. fair to say? Correct. Fair to say. All right. Cool. Well, I've, I've got your slides here. I'll rip through yep. them. Um, you got about seven minutes to, you know, show us how you do it. And then remember, we're going to have the second half of this call will all be Q&A where you guys can ask each other questions. And everybody on today's call, you can ask these leaders questions. Let's roll, bro. Awesome, awesome. So you can kind of see right here, the, the venue is, um, I don't just host these events at libraries or in our office or at a real estate agent. What we do is we host these, um, these events at a bar or a pub or some type of a, um, like a neutral setting. This particular event is held near, near Amazon. And this one, we, we, this is the, I'm showing you an, an image of the class that we do for beers and home buying, which is right next to Amazon. So, um, one, you got to find the right venue and you got to, you got to be willing to spend some money on catering or making it, um, kind of user friendly or neutral. Um, go ahead and go to the next slide. We'll, I'll close with that slide, Dave. Um, and go down to the raving fans right there. Thanks buddy. Um, this is kind of my opening slide and, and how we open each one of these home buyer classes is, uh, we keep it very, very non salesy. And we, we let everyone know from the beginning that we're here to educate. We're here to take some of the fear, answer some of the questions that you have, and take some of the fear out of today's market. So the quote that we have up there on the screen that, that I always put up there when, when the real estate professional or, or myself introduces who we are and what we do, uh, Spencer Rask, Raskoff with, with Zillow, I heard him at a conference two years ago, and he said, the real estate agent of the future is a teacher. And I kind of open with, hey, you all have heard of Zillow, you know, whether you like Zillow or not. Zillow, Zillow's a powerhouse up here in the Seattle marketplace. Well, the CEO of Zillow, Zillow has come out and said that the real estate agents and lenders of the future are educators. And if you don't believe me, try talking to some of these clients. And so we share some of the horror stories that we see and then the, the loan, the file comes over to us and we fix it and we make it right. So I talk about my approach with raving fans, find out what your clients are looking for and deliver above their expectations. Every single client is looking for something different. One client um, may su be super focused on, you know, the bottom line. The other client may be super focused on the experience or they've had a rough experience in the past, or maybe they lost a house in 2010. Um, so they're more, they're more, uh, uh, worried about the advice and, and the experience. We talk about credibility that, you know, I'm recognized nationwide as a, as a top pro producer. What that, that, that's not like, you know, feed my ego. It's to basically let them know that, hey, you're in good hands. We help a lot of people. If you were having heart surgery, you would want a surgeon that has done thousands of those surgeries before, not a rookie right out of medical school. Uh, so we've seen it all. The, the amount of volume that we do makes us an expert. We see a lot of things. We know how to fix a lot of things. And then the last thing is that I'm recognized online for the information that I'm about to share with you guys. So we talk about that. The other thing I talk about is without scaring them, you know, as an educator, especially around first time home buyer classes, you got to understand that home buyers up here in the Seattle marketplace and I have to understand or have to imagine that it's pretty congruent elsewhere. They're scared, man. They're reading the media. They're talking to friends and family members and coworkers about how competitive the market is, how much cash is in the marketplace. You need a big down payment um, that we're heading toward another bubble. So one of the first things I do is we talk about the myths. We talk about the concerns. What are your fears? I don't have a slide. I didn't give it to you, Dave, but the slide in the, that I refer to is it's titled fear factors. Um, so what I want to do is I want to one, I want to eliminate some of the fears in the marketplace, but then two, I want to let everyone know how important it is that you're working with a professional. So, hey, Dave, if you could go back up to that, the, the slide where there's an airliner. So what I do next is I talk about buying a home today is tougher than it's ever been. And, if you, and I'm not saying this to scare you, but buying a home today um, is extremely tough. Back in the, you know, three, four, five years ago, hey, once you're pre-approved, you were good to go. Nowadays, you know, we've got, it's tougher than ever to qualify. Then you've got a, a, a very competitive housing market. And so what I do is I share our process. There's 88 ways that this, that we're going to encounter turbulence. And I kind of share some of the things that could happen, but that we are an extremely qualified flight crew and we're going to help land this plane without it crashing and burning. So we kind of talk about that. So then I kind of put the fear of not buying a home in today's market, but the fear of, not, of working with someone else, not working with a professional. So subtly, this is where I'm starting to sell. 
And then I go to my next slide right here. Hey, if you think you can go to Rocket Mortgage or you can go online to get a home loan, you're extremely confused. And I say this not because they're my competitors. I say this because I get five plus loans a month from credit unions, online lenders, mainly from real estate agents going, Dan, I need you to help me save this deal. <clears throat> and so this is where I talk about strategy matters more than ever. And it's important. I give my top five strategies to compete in this market. And then I talk about why. Hey, why, are, why do credit unions fail? Why do the online lenders fail? And this is not me saying this. This is a stat released by Fannie Mae. Seven out of 10 borrowers in 2016 were dissatisfied with the home loan experience for these three reasons. And I talk about how we help our clients navigate through. And again, going back to raving fans, deliver above their expectations in regards to these three items. So we do the home buyer class and then I close with this. And this is genius. This, I wish I could take credit for this, but the, the, the real estate professional that, that I work with, Christian Noss, I'm up here in Seattle, um, developed this. We close with handing out a, work sh or a, a, a sign up sheet where, hey, if, if anyone would like to sit down with us over the next two days, we booked out three hour time slots where we can sit down with both the real estate agent and I, I will bring a copy of your credit report and then he will find out more information about their goals and their timeline. And by the end of the meeting, this is what they get. They get a total cost analysis, rent versus own analysis and a budget report going, okay, hey, I mentioned, you mentioned that um, you wanted to keep your mortgage payment under $3,200 a month. You had about 80 grand for a down payment. Well, here are three or four options to help you dial in your budget. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. I'm going to come back here in a few minutes and give my strategy for marketing, for venue. But that's kind of, uh, I just wanted to give kind of an overview of my class. Well, I think you did a great overview. Questions are coming in. If you have more questions for Dan, uh, post those in Q&A. In the second half of the call, we'll get into it. Uh, I do want to just shine a light on this, Dan. I mean, great job at educating and then driving them to do a call to action. And that call to action, part of that is a total cost analysis. Brilliant. And I think that's why I hear a lot of people talk about, hey, I do these events, but my conversion rate's not high. Or I'm having a hard time getting a meeting afterwards. You know, you've got to have a lot of value. And the total cost analysis is a great tool and solution for every mortgage professional to get those meetings and then to make those meetings incredibly compelling. So, um, Dan, why don't you jump down? And then, uh, John, why don't you jump on the camera? Uh, I know we've got some pictures of you here. Uh, actually, I'm not sure which pictures are yours. I'm pretty sure this is a picture of you. Um, how's it going, John? Great. Good. Well, I'm going to go ahead and jump off camera. Uh, I know between some pictures that we have, between your website, you know, I'll jump and provide that. But if you could just give us a little bit about what market you're in, what type of volume you do, how much of those results come from events, and then let's unpack your event strategy. Sure. Guys, I, I'm in kind of the opposite market from Dan. I'm in Delaware. Um, I probably, my average loan size is probably half his. So um, last year I closed 275 units and 45 of them were first time homebuyer seminars. Um, so what, what, I, what I do is I was a teacher before I was a high school teacher before I got in this business. I got in in 06, 05, 06, when the rates were going up, there was no refis. So I've always done purchases and I started off doing home buyer seminars and I've done them since 06 consistently and it's always been a big part of my market by necessity because Delaware didn't recover. So there was no move up buyers for years. So it was a first time home buyer market. So I've always done that and specialized in it. Um, so I've evolved the process over years. I, I I take a little bit different strategy. What I've found out is I'm trying to catch buyers when they first raise their hand. They don't have a lender. They don't have a realtor. And I am not promoting myself as a lender. I am I wrote a book, Your Guide to Buying Your First Term in Delaware. I promote myself as the author of the book. They're, they're not feeling like they're being sold anything. So I get a great response and a great attendance based off of that. I've, I've done this for years. And if you make yourself the center of attention on promoting the events as a realtor or a lender, your conversion is going to go down. So you've got to promote the content and the benefit of the seminar. And I don't even promote myself at all as a lender until the day of the seminar, tell them who I work for. And I don't, and I, if you give great content, 
they're going to work with you because you're the expert in front of the room. So I focus on really good content when I'm teaching the seminar and my close ratio at the end for people, I'm closing for them to fill out a form, to have their credit checked, and I'm getting a 90% response ratio out of the room that fill it out if they haven't already done prior to coming to the seminar. Um, Got it. Well, so, let's, yeah, let's, go ahead, Dave. Oh, go, go, oh, no, go ahead with what you were saying, but if you could, within your 10 minutes, although we're now at about seven to eight minutes, uh, if you could make sure you, you talk about how you market, walk us through your checklist so we know how you're getting you know, so many folks to attend the events. If you Certainly. could make that part of your briefing, that would be great. Go yeah, ahead, and I, I'm going to give you guys um, some videos on a, a couple marketing strategies that I've done. Um, we'll give you a website to go to, put your email and name in, and then we'll, we'll give you some downloadable. Uh, there'll be YouTube videos you can watch and, and, a, and a handout. So um, I've gone through every iteration of marketing, and, and there's about 20 different strategies I've used. One, you're going to spend either money or time when you market anything. So if you're a newer loan officer, this is a great strategy, but you've got to temper your money with your time. So when I started out, I literally built my seminar business on flyer marketing and email marketing and, and phone calling. Um, so you, you don't have to spend tons of money on Facebook ads and pay per click and all that to fill a room. Um, and then over time I built up SEO to get organic searches to find me. And surprisingly, they're one of the, home buying seminars is one of the easier terms to rank for because um, not a lot of people are doing that. So. Um, in terms of, of marketing the event, I, 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 one of the things I don't do is I don't partner with a realtor specifically or um, an insurance person or like that. I have uh, an insurance person to sponsor the events. They don't talk. I have an attorney that sponsors the event, but they don't talk. And one of the reasons is I got my seminar approved for uh, continuing education credit for one of the housing um, counseling programs. They get two hours towards the eight hours, so I have a very specific program I do. Um, and that markets that. Um, so then with, with that content, I'll, I'll have realtors that I have a, a system where they're allowed to market and promote the seminar and generate buyer leads, but I don't have any one agent that talks. So I, I have a seminar I do every month in Newark, Delaware, and I have about 15 agents that actively market it to get leads in addition to myself. When you partner with one specific agent, you just limited your marketing partner to that one person if you let them talk. Um, the other challenge that I found is that agents aren't good at marketing. So it's very hard to find a one agent to partner with that's going to help you fill the room. Um, so if you're going to do these, plan on being the person that fills the room. So some quick strategies, flyer marketing by distributing flyers either in email or going uh, community plate, community venues, um, bulletin boards, the real estate rack, if you have those real estate books, putting the flyers in there works really good because people that are going for the book go for the flyers. Um, so I, it, versus wasting the time here, I, one of the videos I'm going to give you is a whole video on how to do flyer marketing, permission-based and non-permission-based, so you'll get all those strategies in the video. Um, and then. Uh, one of the other things is Facebook can be a great way to go, putting together an event on Facebook, which is really easy and free, and then um, promoting that event and tagging people into that event is another great way to do that. Um, and one of the videos I'm going to give you is a quick video on how to set up the Facebook event. It's pretty easy to do that. So those are flyer marketing and Facebook event marketing are two really easy, cheap, well, free ways to get started marketing the events. Now, you can also run Facebook targeted ads, but again, then you've got your ad spend and you want to be targeted and have a good ad that, that converts. Otherwise, you're going to waste money on that. Um, in terms of my venue, I do a hotel because I am getting 100 to 120 people register. The metrics are half will show up. So if you register 100, you're going to get 40 to 50 people show up in the room. If you register 20, if you get 10, be thankful. Because the lower the number, the less that half holds. So you, if you get 10, you may get five, you may get two. Um, but for me, I'm consistently in Newark, Delaware, generating 100 to 120 registrations. My area is 71,000 people. So if you're in a, a more pop, densely populated place, your your number of registrations can be much higher than that. Um, I did try it 
I, I, I failed in one market I'll give you. I went and tried and did it in Frederick, Maryland for a big realtor to ask me to do it. It's The surrounding area is not populated. It's a very move up market. So I was lucky to pull 10 to 15 people every month doing every marketing strategy I had. So if you're in a very rural market that's a move up market, you may have your, your results, you know, that's what you're going to get, 10 to 15, maybe 20 people. If you're in a densely populated market, like I ran them at, right outside Baltimore in, in Maryland, and I was getting 65 people in a room a month um, using the same strategies I do in Newark, Delaware. I do one every other month in Dover, Delaware, more rural. I'll get in the two-month period versus the month of marketing, I'm going to get 30 to 40 people. I'm getting 15 to 25 to show up in a room, and that's just the market there. So uh, your market at population density will determine how many you get, but you don't have to be in some super metropolitan to get 40 people in a room because I'm not in Newark, Delaware. Um, so I run a two-hour class every time. It's the same curriculum every time that I run, and it's very uh, content-based in terms of budgeting, credit, home buying process, mortgage loan process, shopping for the home, all that. I go through A to Z. I also kind of build that into an overall financial plan. If you're using Mortgage Coach, you could pull some different slides for rent to own and um, also showing them you know, the value of the investment over time would fit perfectly in if you're doing that kind of presentation, building it in an overall financial plan. Dave, you got any questions for me? Based, I know I threw out a lot. First of all, you're killing it. I mean, super impressed with the amount of folks that you're getting. We do actually have a lot of questions for you, but let's save that for the second half of the call. I, I am sharing my screen right now um, with your website. By the way, everybody, John was kind enough to put some material together that would be valuable for the mortgage coach community. So the link is homebuyerseminarsystems.com. But John, if you could just tell us what the mortgage coach community will get if they um, put their email in here, you know, what are they, what are you, what are they going to get from you? Yeah, you're going to get um, uh, a link for a video of how to market with flyers. A video. Of, uh, you're going to get a sample flyer and a video of how you should customize that flyer to market for you. And then you're also going to get another video on how to do the Facebook event uh, marketing. And then you'll also get a link for a video of me doing a two-hour presentation so you can watch me do one. It is older. It's from 2014. I've fixed, I've you know, evolved some stuff, but you'll get the gist of my seminar. Um, and then um, I, I've been doing these for years. A lot of people have asked me how I fill the room. I'm currently working on putting that whole giant system together to, um, to sell that at a, at a minimum cost to people. So I, if you're interested in that, I, if you do put your email in when we launch it, we're doing a soft launch in December, and I will open the soft launch to the mortgage coach community for Dave. So if you put your email in, you'll get that information um, on the soft launch of what everything is entailed. But I, I've got a whole website system I have built that I use to register. It also will instantly build a website for your realtors and your LOs and all that. I don't want to promote too much on the call, but that's you'll also get that information later. All right, John. Well, hey, thanks for unpacking it. Congrats on your success. Thanks for coming to the Mortgage Coach Community Share, and I'll bring you back in about 10 minutes. So uh, if you could go ahead and turn off the video, and then Christine, if you could turn on your video and join us on screen real quick. Hi. Hello. How are you? Great. Good. What? Well, good. Well, I'm, I'm sure you guys all have a lot of questions for each other. I'm getting all kinds of questions um, in GoToWebinar, so we will get those in a minute. I do want to push a quick poll before Christine goes. And, and everybody who attends these, you know how I roll. 70% of you need the vote. But how often do you do home buyer events right now? If it's like never, never done one, what is that? Want to know. If you do them monthly, we want to know. If you do them, you know, several times a year, let us know. And if you do at least one a year, let us know. So only 45% of you have voted. Uh, come on, guys, participate. This is a mastermind. That means participation is required. Um, all right. So, Christine, I want you to be able to see this survey. Um, there are the results. <laughs> We've got, you know, the majority have never done one. 7% are monthly, which is pretty impressive, I think. Uh, and then, you know, 25% are doing, you know, at least one a year, if not several times a year. So, you know, 
70% are never and 30% are in the game. So uh, any comments on that, Christine? No, it's not surprising. I think teaching and public speaking can be very intimidating. So um, my approach after listening to both of uh, the gentlemen go is that they obviously have a lot of experience at what they're doing. Um, you asked me to introduce myself a little bit, so I'll just let everyone know. I'm the vice president of Animac. I oversee the sales force there. Um, and I focus specifically on real estate education and loan officer education. So I was once a loan officer doing these, and so much of what they just said they do um, was, you know, the things that stood out for me was the approach of coming towards uh, the, the, the consumer as a teacher, not selling themselves, really, you know, promoting these events as educational events. So I started doing these as LOs um, decades ago, and then as I became a manager, I began to train uh, loan officers on doing these. And I could see, I guess, my uh, greatest attributes today to share with people are what I have seen fail. Um, in managing uh, loan officers do these and then again you know the tricks that I think are going to make you have the best event and, and it's really right in line um, with what both of them said and you know I'll start by saying this you have to have time to plan an event um, a lot of times the mistake that's made is a realtor will call with the idea of having a first time home buying seminar and say let's do this next week let's do it in a couple weeks um, sometimes even you know three or four weeks is not enough planning time. I suggest, and if you want to, I don't know if you can put up the guide that I have, but I wrote it, a step-by-step -step guide that our uh, sales force uses nationally uh, on how to put um, these seminars together. You're going to get this today. Um, I believe those are available as well as a couple of PowerPoint presentations that we offer. So, in the way. so yeah, by the way, Christine, uh, people have uh, piled in going, hey, can I get a copy of this? So yeah. the copy of this and a few other things Christine gave us are in handouts. So in the handout section, she was kind enough to provide us with um, some downloads. If you're watching the recording, the video of today's call, the link from John and the links to these handouts will be down below in the description in our YouTube channel. So you're watching this from YouTube. Look down below and links to everything Christine's talking about and John. And by the way, People asked about Don's, or Dan's slides. A link to that PowerPoint uh, is also both in handouts for the live event and in the description below. So I'll, I'll walk through this. And then also, I do want to remind you, Christine, I have some of those slides that you provided. So you just tell me what to do and when. Absolutely, sure. So, you know, what um, Dave has up right now is my guide to guide, and it really starts, I can't express enough the need for um, the time for planning. So I suggest out of the gates that you hold a meeting in the brokerage that you're going to um, be sponsoring the event uh, with that brokerage, and you get all the realtors in that brokerage together. You are going to find that you can drive more people in if you have a little army of uh, people doing the invitations and that everybody putting these invitations out um, you're much stronger to pull people in and if you you know one of the steps that I put on here is creating an evite um, which you can use on social media and you obviously can send it out to databases via email but an HTML evite Eventbrite is who I suggest um, you know if you do that it's capturing uh, RSVP so it helps you with your headcount wherever your venue is going to be I'm going to talk about venue in just a second but it's also going to um, allow you to see you know your rate of return week over week if you knew it had been I suggest 60 days to plan all the realtors are using it you create a beautiful uh, invitation and I suggest that you have it at a community center remember who your audience uh, is you know I obviously manage national markets and I know you know both uh, the urban and suburban areas your first time home buyers have one thing in common and that is that they're intimidated by this process they've seen horrible press over the last decade um, because of what the mortgage industry has gone through. They're afraid. They're getting good and bad advice from family members. Um, and you're the person advertising, come, uh, you know, get educated, and, you know, you're putting it out in a, in a free format. So, you know, your approach is so important to who's going to warm up to the idea of attending. 
one, your venue has to be a welcoming place. You know, I find that a lot of times if you hold these at community centers, uh, local colleges, school auditoriums, you know, it has, it resonates education and at the same time, it's a very friendly feeling, especially with people that might be starting this process and really are sticking their toe into the home buying pool. Um, may not have saved a lot of money um, yet and really are testing out where you know they want to be. So make your venue inviting, make it local to the market that you're publicizing in, put that e-invite out by all the realtors in the brokerage, you know, pick that date 60 days out, make sure that you're dripping that marketing um, piece out. You know, the other things that I would also tell you is that you want to um, make sure that you keep these classes to an hour. You know, I give some suggested tips in this guide that I guide in that it's not too long, um, that it has a very soft approach in that, you know, you're going to get up and you're going to bring people through an education of renting versus buying, the type of money that they need, the type of documentation that's collected, an overview of what has otherwise been explained as a very painful and convoluted process, the mortgage process. So I have supplied a PowerPoint that you can get in the materials that actually is very educating and brings them through and even has a rent versus by guide. Yes, actually the other PowerPoint, Dave. Um, that PowerPoint that he just put up is a great, yes, this one. Um, this particular first time home buying PowerPoint, if you click down a few uh, slides, keep going, you're going to come um, to some rent versus buying uh, educational right here. And it gives you a little bit of a guide and it walks you through if you're paying X, you know, this is what you're paying in 10 years. This is what you're paying in 20 years. So it really sells itself for a renter in the audience in terms of the type of money that they're putting out and, and how much they can afford for a home if they're paying X in rent already. So, you know, you kind of have to start with that approach of people really understanding the difference between where their money is taking action in the home buying um, area. So my step-by-step -step guide is going to really help all of you. I don't want to take up uh, much more time. Both of these PowerPoints are available. One is a, from an LO perspective and one is just a general teaching uh, slide perspective that you can replicate uh, with your own company name and uh, use that to educate. Very um, has done very, very well for us uh, in hundreds, thousands of educational seminars that we supply out there. So I hope my tips help you fill the room. Um, I can tell you that you absolutely need to try to get a high number of people to RSVP because it is true that only 50% of the people are going to show up. So we've all had events where you had one or two people that uh, showed up and you spent money on you know, catering it. Um, and it really is a dud and it's a waste of your time and everybody involved if you're inviting an insurance guy, an appraisal guy, a realtor. So please, you know, follow my guide and starting with the planning and the time to take for planning, the time to take for marketing, the way you should market, the location you should have it, and you're going to have a friendly event very educational, that's well done, well responded to, um, and you're going to walk away with opportunities to give referrals back to your realtors that are in the room. You're going to have opportunities to get a real um, bump in your uh, numbers yourself as a loan officer because these will get you instant buyers. Um, and if they start shopping right away, you're going to just see an influx in your volume immediately. So if you pepper these out like three or four a year, this could really become a game changer in terms of what it is that you do uh, for volume month over month. So again, don't be afraid of public speaking. I have been doing it for a very long time and I still get nervous. Um, that never goes away, but you just have to remember you're an expert at what you do um, and that the consumer isn't. Um, even if they've done this before and they're coming back to learn more about home buying education in today's market. So, you know, have the confidence to know you really are here as a trusted advisor and the person with the expertise. Thanks. Love it. Great job. By the way, we've got a lot of kudos, Christine, for you. People saying thank you for the slides. Thank you for the checklist. They are in the handout section, and if you're watching this on a video, they are down below.
So thank you. Uh, Dan, thank you for your slides. Um, the entire presentation, by the way, Chris, Christine, come on back on, share your screen. I'm not sharing your screen, but share your, your video. Uh, so real, real quick, and then by the way, Dan and John, be ready to click on screen and we're going to go into full on mastermind mode. But real quick, Christine, you mentor a lot of loan officers. If you could just tell everybody, you know, what is a good number of people to have in, the, in a room and what is a good conversion rate in terms of, uh, you know, how many loans should they close as a result of doing an event? If you could just share some quick best practices. Yeah, I always tell loan officers to try to do no less than, you know, try to get no less than 50 to 60 RSVPs, which is going to get you in that 30 to 40, um, you know, realm. I've seen events where we had more than RSVP. And so, like, I've always tried to measure the results of any events that we're holding. And this is the area, like, I'm constantly doing events. There really isn't a rhyme or reason. I do say in my guide, so pay attention to this, that there is a best evening time for people and there is a best day and week for people Mondays are not a good night um, Fridays are not a good night so you got to kind of stay out of date nights and you know everybody's trying to get back into that Monday mode so that Tuesday Wednesday Thursday night tends to have the best rate of return um, so there's your headcount target and conversion wise I find that um, you're probably going to see if you have 50 people there that you're going to end up somewhere in around 40% that immediately qualify and the rest are going to be credit repair percentages of people that need coaching or need to save additional monies. They came and they really are really just starting and moving towards those financial goals. But I will tell you this, you can plant a ton of seeds as an LO, so stay on top of those folks, work with them, and um, they're going to come back to you because of that loyalty they have that you educated them. And that's going to be, you know, business for you in six months. So the conversion on these can be very, very high because people are loyal if you gave them something of value. Okay, great. So John and Dan, if you could come on camera. Guys, we have uh, 18 minutes left. I like to keep it on point and on time. Uh, where's Sean? There you are, John. What's up, buddy? And by the way, look, you could do video anywhere. John's in his car and we got him on video. So, so I want to close. I want each of you to be ready in your head to close a challenge because, you know, the biggest challenge people are going to have is just the fear of doing it. So that will be the last question. You'll each get one minute in closing to help people overcome that fear and do it. So be ready, all, four, all three of you. But I, I, here's... A, a common trend is that everybody on this call is successful. You all are converting loans. You're all helping families. But, you know, Dan, you are coming in as a loan officer. You're not doing events in realtors' offices. Christine is saying, hey, let's partner with realtors. Uh, John, you're saying, hey, I'm not a loan officer. I'm an author. Um, so one takeaway for everybody is there's more than one way to win. You know, there's one more than way to win. Now, another commonality is they all have the heart of a teacher. So, I mean, I, I would just make the proposal, if you don't have the heart of a teacher, and you're just like, I want to get social security numbers, pre quals and do loans, maybe doing an event strategy is not right for you. Um, so either you need to upgrade your beliefs and be, have that heart of the teacher, or, again, there's a lot of ways of being successful in the mortgage business. Um, not everybody has to do events. But if you do have the heart of a teacher, and you're not doing events, I would just say you're not living, you know, you're not, you can get so much more joy out of this business by jumping in and doing this. The other common trend is that you all said, hey, we, we plan, we spend a lot of resources on it, and we're committed to this over time. So I would just throw out to the folks on this call that, hey, if you're not ready to commit, spend resources, plan, and do it right, you're probably not going to be successful. Um, you know, or at least hope is, is your strategy and it's not going to probably work. So in closing thoughts, I want to focus on marketing because I think a loan officer with the heart of a teacher will figure out how to deliver a compelling presentation. And we've got slides below. I've done other calls on events. I'll put a link below to those. Dan, I'm going to start with you. What has been your number one marketing campaign, number one Facebook post? Just give us a bullseye of something that has killed it for you from a marketing yeah, so, standpoint. Yeah, so kind of open book. One, Christine and John, killer information because you guys have models that, that I personally am not using. And uh, 
Incredible. What, what I want to share though real quickly, Dave, because I think this is important for uh, anyone who's listening. I'm listening to your stats. You guys are going out and you're getting 100 plus people in there. And some of your, I think, Christine, you were mentioning that uh, I don't, I, what your conversion, your conversion rate is. I need to show you this or share, share this with you. I'm, we're getting 30 to 32 people opt in on our form, and we're getting 25 to 27 to show up. So I have a higher, um, and we can kind of, this is maybe another call to figure out why mine are higher. And then out of that, out of the 25 to 27 attendees that will show up, We'll put four into escrow within 30 to 60 days. So that's a pretty decent conversion rate there. But here's the key. So I want to share with you some of the things that um, I think are, are needle movers in my business. Todd Duncan said it numerous times, the fortunes and the follow-up. So they go into a follow-up program where we're calling them professionally and politely, but we're following up with them until we can get them into, con in, into our office for a mortgage planning meeting or with a real estate professional. Sometimes I earn their business. And they go with another realtor. Sometimes they go with the realtors, and they don't use uh, don't don't use me. But I wanted to share with you kind of my audience is millennials. So millennials can smell BS a mile away. So going back to what every single one of us said, if you don't have the heart of the teacher, all it is yeah. is a sales presentation, and they're going to be out of there. So you know you've got to show your passion for education, um, and then give them millennials. Dave, we've studied this a lot. Millennials, you can earn their trust if you can share with them or show them something that they don't already know, that they can't find on Google. And some of these stats and some of the things that we have in our brain in regards to the process and our systems, they can't find online. So that's kind of a kind of an insider tip, I think, there. But I wanted to share at least with the listeners my audience because I think that's important. Um, okay, so would you, you, you asked about marketing, something that I'm doing in regards to marketing. Num num number one marketing, and I would like to, if you don't mind, share a killer marketing message that you did on Facebook within our productivity uh, private Facebook group. By the way, if you're on this call and you're not a member of the Mortgage Coach Friday productivity group in Facebook, do a search. I'll let you in. And Dan, I want you to share, you know, your best social post that, that you know, created engagement and helped put bunch of seats. I think you guys, my number one, my number one MO is video and just, I do a video a week, sometimes two, and I share it on my personal page, and I share it on my business page, and I run targeted Facebook ads to it, period. Uh, my goal by 2020 is to have every real estate agent in Seattle know who I am. Whether you use me or not, you'll know who I am. And so I just get the message out. The, the other message that I'm getting out is to my past clients and to all my pre-approvals, I send these, these two-minute items of value, you know, move up analysis, rent versus own, you know, the last one that I shared was uh, three ways to pay for your closing costs. People aren't getting this online. They're not, and they're getting, they're not getting it in an educational type format. Um, so I think my biggest thing, Dave, is the education, the consistent education using video and email uh, marketing, and then just staying consistent to using social media with that, with the, with the video and the emails, or with the videos. Excuse Love me. It. Hey, so great takeaways. Kudos to you on your, you know, event conversion. And by the way, I've interviewed Dan a lot of times. I'm going to put a link below to what I think is one of my all-time favorite interviews with Dan. You can learn more about his strategies there. So, so John, if you could um, highlight number one marketing strategy um, that you that you've done and anything you're willing to share on that. Great. Um, I'm going to what I'm doing now and what I may recommend are not exactly the same thing because. You can grow like I get tons of free traffic now because I get a ton of organic traffic that I don't have to pay for because I've got my website to rank for the keywords. Now, as a newer LO, because we had 70% not doing home buyer seminars, saying I'm going to go rank for SEOs and not pay for it is not the strategy you're going to walk out of the gate with. Um, I think when you're your first one or two seminars, you can get a huge bang for your buck by marketing directly to your database and your realtor's database. But what will happen is if you continue that strategy, it will dwindle down because those people would have already gotten the message. So you can really start off your first one or two events with a hard target to your current database, past current clients, and have your referral affinity partners do the same thing uh, with a great email promoting the event. with it. Like she said, a link. I use an online registration system. 
that's that's key especially people want to be able to click and register if they have to call you and email you to register your conversion is going to go down so that's a great way to get started with some database marketing targeted but you've got to be building some other strategy because that's going to tailor down after your second event you will you will drop way off um, that's where you're going to have to do some direct to consumer marketing um, I like Facebook events is a great free way to do the event you can tag all your realtors in, invite them all to the event do a phone call to them if you're doing an, uh, an office like I use hotel to do my venue um, then you can have a bunch of different realtors marking the event unless you've partnered with one realtor then you're, you're stuck um, but if you get a whole bunch of realtors even not even in the same office if, if they're not speaking you're just going to convert the leads for them they'll be happy so email marketing database and then start doing some Facebook event marketing and then you can do some Facebook targeted ads and what I found on Facebook running the ads is women converting higher than men I don't know if you've seen that too Dan but the women are converting higher than men on your first time home buyer seminar marketing um, and just so you know I market it both ways a first time home buyer seminar and a home buyer seminar if they ask me which one it is the answer is yes depending on who I'm talking to so um, <laughs> Love you don't that. have to just be first time home buyer you can market home buyer and catch some people I haven't owned for three to five years um, so and then building if you if you get a website then you can build up some search engine optimization and that's what I've done if you google Delaware home buyer seminar you'll see my stuff and you can see what I'm doing but that's kind of there's some other strategies you can add in but the top one start with your database a great email call to action driving them to an event right registration if you don't have a website and then start adding in the Facebook event and then maybe some Facebook ads love it love it uh, John will you um, either put it yourself in our productivity mastermind group on Facebook or send me a link so I can just give people one sample in our Facebook group are you cool with that yeah yeah we'll have to call catch up okay. I'll put something in there okay great uh, so Christine uh, Dan did you have a quick question or comment yeah so yeah, real quick. Get Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Got some time here, buddy. Yeah, you're going to get okay. tons of questions on this, Dave, on the Facebook ad strategies. I don't know about John. I've spent thousands of dollars. I've hired coaches on how to kind of get that dialed in. It's and it's an ongoing process. So I know mortgage. You guys listening, you're going to be like, well, how do you run Facebook ads, dude? You're going to have to hire someone, or it's a totally separate call because it's that is a that's an art and a science. Yeah, no, no doubt. By the way, I did an interview with Chris Smith, the author of The Conversion Code. I did one all about conversion, and I did one all about Facebook marketing, and I guess I'll put a link to that below, too. Uh, again, but to Dan's point, if you don't have expertise in this, you know, get, a, get professional help. So, uh, Christine, you know, what, what, what are some of the top marketing things you've seen, and is there anything you're willing to share with the community? You got about four minutes, and then we're going to do one minute from each of you with a push to get folks off their butt and on stage. Yeah, I think this is a great way for loan officers to kind of start their purchase career. It's hard to believe that LOs are still trying to convert. You know, the company that I'm at went completely purchased about six or seven years ago, but I was in charge of leading that sales force from a refinance format to a purchase format. And without aging myself, I've had to do the reverse of that a couple of times with uh, other markets that, you know, have been cyclical. And as an originator back in my day, I had to do the same. Here's what I would tell you, you know, one common theme that we all have is if you took a collegiate marketing course, the first thing the professor would teach you is that marketing is um, drip and that it has to consistently be happening. And so if you take that above everything else in anything that you do, that is something, that is a mantra that I'm constantly teaching. Now, you know, I own my own uh, company, my own seminar company. I obviously do this for Amy Mac. I'm out on the speaking circuit. You'll see things. I'm not going to plug myself. What I'm going to tell you is that six or seven years ago when I was trying to get sales guys to do purchase and we started doing realtor education, nobody showed up. You know, we would put out great classes and we'd sit around theorizing on things that we thought were relevant, um, including first time home buying, and we would have no show situations. You know, we stuck with it. We never gave up. We, we did it. We do it three times a week. Um, and I can tell you that we have over 40,000 realtors 
that today are attending the weekly classes that we put on uh, nationwide by a webinar, which are done Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. We have been written about in Forbes magazine twice because of our realtor education. So it, when I get asked this question in interviews, like, what did you do? I, I would tell you there were times when we second-guessed ourselves. There were times when, you know, we had some failed events. I'm going to tell loan officers this. Get yourself out there. Be an educator. Don't go there with the intention of selling. Go there with the intention of teaching. You know, one of the beautiful things about our business is that we really, really can, um, you know, enjoy that we are still delivering the American dream, uh, you know, that we have something that's incredibly powerful in educating and being a trustworthy, uh, you know, uh, financial advisor. I just wrote an article because I blog weekly uh, on LinkedIn. I, I publish every Sunday and I wrote um, about the good guys prevailing and it's all about, you know, gentlemen like, um, you know, these guys that are obviously every single week, you know, they've survived the mortgage implosion, they're here, and what it takes to be an LO in today's market, and how you have to be a good guy and why. So, you know, I just think there's some marketing techniques, stick with it, do one, but keep doing them. Whatever you do, keep doing it, and consistently keep coming. That's my marketing tip. Yeah, so, no, I, I respect that. Uh, there is no magic bullet, and you just got to get out and do it. So we've got four minutes. There's three of you. You each have a minute. Dan, you're going to go first. For, for the 70% that have never done an event, and they've got a little stage fright, um, but let's assume they have the heart of a teacher. Go. Okay, one minute or less. So I would break this down into six categories, and you can replay this video. Dave can maybe share this. But one, you need to break it down into pre-class marketing. Um, two, you need to identify, and then part of that's uh, identifying the venue. Number three, get dialed in on your audience and your presentation. Both John and Christine have shared um, incredible slides on that. Um, number four, get good at your, your approach, your closing skills. I mean, again, we're there to educate, but we're also there to close people on why they should work with us. I mean, I think that's huge. With dealing, me dealing with millennials, um, my number one job is to educate them and to close them. They're taking action. If you look at our conversion numbers, they're wanting to buy right now. They're not confused on renting versus owning. They're actually wanting to buy. They're scared of the market. They don't think they can buy because they need more money down. So get good at closing, However, find out however that might be in your market. Um, number five, your post class one-on-one. -on -one. That's the key to conversion. Get that follow-up. I think all of us are doing that. Post class, get them to opt in, get them to meet with you that next day. We hold our classes on Thursday. We meet with them on Saturdays and Sundays right after the class. Lastly, fortunes in the follow-up. Make sure you have a follow-up program. This, you guys, will, when the market turns and slows down, this will recession-proof your business, um, especially if you're catering to home buyers and realtors. Love it, Dan. You went over your one minute, but you killed it, brother. Uh, by the way, part of Dan's success is the fact that he is providing a total cost analysis. He's talking about it at the event. He's saying, let's meet, and the total cost analysis is part of the compelling value prop for the follow-up. Uh, John, you got a minute or less? Go. You know, why should first-timers do their first event? My best piece of advice is ready, fire, aim. Just frickin' do it. It's, it's, it's not going to be great the first time, but it's going to be better the second time, It'll be better the third time. Just, just get over it. Okay, your first presentation is going to be five people in the room, which is what you want. And if there's 50, awesome, just wing it. The best thing you got to know is they don't know that you messed up. They don't. They don't know you stuttered. They don't know you said the wrong thing. They don't know what you're saying is total BS. Just, just do it. Get a presentation. Book the room. Give yourself at least three weeks. And just freaking ready, fire, aim is the best solution I can give you. And then commit to doing it either every other month or a month for the next six months. Book them out so you're, you're stuck with it and just do them and market it. But, but that's the best advice I can give you, just do it. So, so courage, and then the Nike slogan, just do it. Love that, brother. Uh, Christine, a minute or less. All right, I'm going to do it in 30 seconds. That way I'll catch us up on time. Um, uh, bottom line is execution. You know, I write and write and write about this tactic. If we can show up at the classes. We can learn. We can do anything we want. But you have to do those follow-up steps. 
you know, so many sales guys fail at this part. You know, if you don't have a CRM and with first time home buyer seminars, you have to do the after work. So I would tell you all, whatever you do, whatever time you spend to have a su successful event, make sure that when you walk out of there, you realize that is not the end. It's the beginning of servicing these clients and that it really is going to be a process that you need to stick with, but you're just going to be planting those seeds and it's going to flourish and increase your sales. That's it. Love it. So the, so the four of you were awesome. I have a, a couple follow-ups. I did put a poll up before you leave. Let us know what you thought of today's call. Did we surpass your expectations, takeaways? And if you're new to the community or a guest and you want to demo on board with coach, let us know. So one, people asked about the links. If you're watching this in the video, they're down below. I'm getting ready to close this call out. So if you want the links, they'll be in the in the description on YouTube of this video. So that's where the links are. Uh, people asked about the Friday Mastermind. Just put in Morgan Coach Productivity Mastermind or you know some version of that into um, into Facebook, and it's a private group. We'll let you in it every Friday at nine o'clock. We meet, and the, the purpose of that call is just how to make more money in less time. You know, it's a mastermind format. I bring in top leaders. I've done it 52 straight weeks. There are recordings of that in our YouTube channel, and, and it's one of the best things we do. So I've answered that question. Uh, so, hey, the, the three of you, thank you so much for preparing for this, being willing to come in humble, hungry, and smart. Uh, you guys laid out a lot of things for folks. You gave us a lot of value, and I'm grateful on behalf of the community. This call is a wrap. Take care, everybody. Bye. Thanks, guys.